you all know my name already because <laughs> you saw me probably at the, on the first day at the stage uh, of the welcome. But anyway, my name is Wolfgang Richter, I'm from Chip ID, and I have the honor to yeah, tell you a story about house building with Scrum today. Can anybody hear me in the room, so in the last room? Is this loud enough? If not, just let me know, please. Um, just to give you a little bit heads up of what I'm talking about, this is mainly a case study today because this is my own personal experience. So what we did a couple of years ago at home, we, that means my family, so my wife and so on. Um, so it's really what happened there, what went well, what didn't go so well. Uh, I heard already there are some people in the room who do house building, so maybe that's an inspiration, maybe not. You will see in the end, okay? <coughs> Um, and also to get to recall what happened there and to get my brain in this mood of 2013, that was the year when it happened. You see, I'm dressed like that a little bit. I have, others have cheat sheets, you know, I have cheat tools. They remind me of this time and what I did with that. So that's the reason why I placed them here. Good. So what is this story all about? Um, what you can see on the first slide here is the home where I, uh, the house where I live in with my family. Um, it was a single home, a single family home. So my parents bought this uh, this house in I think in 1973. They did all the renovation from there on and they, they upgraded it a little bit. But the house was originally built in 1928. That means between the big wars, yeah. And if you can imagine that the, the material and the money and so on between the big uh, wars, it didn't really exist. So you didn't build solid walls, the, the, not bricks or something. They grabbed any kind of material they could find, and that's what in the walls, for example. So it was not a simple exercise to work with this uh, substance, with this uh, building. But yeah, anyway, that's our home, that's where we wanted to stay, that's what we wanted to upgrade. This was the, the starting point for us. We did, we did a lot of uh, looking for other places or if we want to build something new, but now we decided to stay in there. And the goal, okay, there is no laser point, as you can see, so I need my finger. Uh, we wanted to go to a two-family home. That means renovation, expanding, upgrading stuff inside, etc. All you can imagine that you can do with a house uh, when you want to renovate, when you want to upgrade, etc. Um, what happens when you think about expanding your home, renovating it? I mean, we're talking about house building with Scrum, of course, we talk about the analogies. So, we were the people who wanted to continue to live in there. So we were pretty much stakeholders for ourselves. We had a huge wish list. I think that's the same in every product development, environment, in every project. There are people who just have wishes, tons of wishes, millions of wishes. We were very creative, so this is just a, a very small selection. I mean, we thought about our backyard, about the wiring, about kitchens, about bathrooms. Wow, anything you can think of. And our beginning was really, we created this huge wish list. Yeah, so far. <laughs> so far, so good. Um, how do you build a home, traditionally? I mean, did, do you think we really started with the idea, yeah, we want uh, to expand our house by using Scrum? No, not seriously. We, we, we started traditionally. We had this huge wish list, we had all the plans, we got then the permit from the government so that we are allowed to do it that way. We met, made the, the first plans, like where are the walls, where are the windows, things like that. And we actually, we didn't know it differently. We wanted to continue with this kind of uh, house building. Um, yeah. This is, the perm, uh, this is where we got the permit from. So this is the plan you have to send to the government. Yeah, they tell you that fits into everything. Yeah, it's allowed, go on. We did that. It took us months and months and months because we had to go in some iterations. People over there change. The first one said, yeah, we need to change this in the plan. Then I went back to the government and told them we have changed that according to what you said. This was a different person then. He told me again, okay, 
yeah, that's not exactly what we need. Uh, change it again, etc., etc. This happened five times actually. <laughs> five times. The last, the fifth time when I was there and it was another guy again. I said, "F U C K off," <laughs> something like that. So it, I wasn't polite anymore. It was six months delayed before we started because of that. I said. Hey, every time I come here, somebody tells me we need to change something in the plan. Then I come back with a new plan, updated. Where is this guy? Where is the very first guy? He is not working in this department anymore. I don't care. Is this guy in the house? In the, in the, can I talk to this first guy who told me to update it? Yeah, well, he's two stories above. He's in another office. Well, uh, you can go there, but he's not working in our department anymore. I went up these two stories, got to this guy, told him, hey, six months ago you told me to update this. Then you have colleagues who told me to update it differently. What do you think? Well, that's okay. So can we build this now? Can you say that's okay? Can you give me the permit? Yeah, sure I can. Push. <laughs> 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 That's bureaucracy. That's pure bureaucracy. So that's how we start, okay? Um, yeah, we got the concessions, and then we thought about creating the detail, the plans for the detail. So this was the big picture. This was the architecture. Yeah, like in software development, you have also this kind of architecture. You need to know what you want to build. Is it a, a skyscraper? Is it just two, uh, two families or whatever? And we thought we now need to think about the outlets, cabinets, styles, wiring, things like that. Right. Creating detailed plans for that. Yeah. But <laughs> that's the next part. The message from our architect. And we looked a long time for our architect because we wanted to find a, a someone who is familiar with <laughs> this old kind of buildings. So we found this lady, she was in her sixties already. So but she it looked it made sense what she told us. And this was her message then when we were at this stage. Yeah. I will be available for another month. Then it's over. Okay. So what now? The normal way is we create detailed plans together with the architect and with the other people who will do something there, the craftsman, etc. But within one month, yeah, possibly, but then we have the plan and she's not available anymore. Should we start over looking for an architect who understands that? I mean, we did it for a long time. And we weren't really, uh, we, we didn't think that makes any sense. So my wife, I just need to let you know that my wife is also working in this software industry. She's a scrum master, so I'm yeah, scrum master, coach, trainer, whatever you want to call that. Um, and we started thinking after we had this panic attack. So when we went back to rational thinking, first of all, it was just emotional. Well, uh, we invested so much time, it's gone, it was for nothing. That was our first you know, reaction to that. But we had two options, we thought, when we started <coughs> rational thinking and analyzing the situation. Option one. Find another architect. Wait another three to four months before we begin. We already had a delay of six months, right? The consequence is we will not be ready in time. It's an option. Doesn't sound very nice. Will not be ready in time. Who likes that? Yeah, I don't. I want to be ready in time, if it's possible. Or the second option was we just started without detailed plan without knowing, uh, knowing whether there is a button over there, a light over there, an outlet over there, whatever. But in house building, you need to know that. You cannot move the wall within two meters or the outlet from here to there easily. It's not like we are used to that, used to that in software development. It's also difficult there, we just don't see it right away. If this outlet or the button or the light goes somewhere else, it's a lot of effort. You start to rebuild it, right? That would be option two. Who would do that? Just hands up. Who would select option one? Just my personal curiosity. Okay? 
<laughs> Who would select option two? Okay, interesting. What did we do? We went with option two. And we thought, okay, if you're working with Scrum, with agility, with all this kind of flexibility and what we have in there, could that work with house building as well? We have no experience, right? And I mean, house building is renovating and upgrading is fun in a, a home is expensive. Yeah, it was our own money that was at stake. That's a different situation again. If you work with different foreign money or your own money, everybody can tell me it's the same. It's not the same. <laughs> Even if you're the best agile practitioner, whatever in the world, it's not the same. It it it, it pulls you in a different. Uh, mental situation. But if we do a jump start, how? I mean of course we started doing some research. Is there some reference on the internet? Can you find articles about house building the scrum? I met Jeff Sutherland in I think it was pretty much at the same time or one year before and he told me there's a, a construction company in Boston who you work with scrum or scrum niche like but I couldn't find any yeah, article or something, literature about it, what I could read or my wife. So it was really, really, really a hypothesis and an experiment. Maybe an expensive experiment. Uh, Phil in the morning told about courage. We thought of, uh, we asked ourselves, do we have the courage to try that? It was a hard decision until we said yes. Yeah, because if it fails, what's the consequence? No home anymore, no money anymore to buy anything else. That's a, that's a, well, a really a consequence you don't want to face. But what does that mean? Agile in house building or even with Scrum? Yeah, two week sprints, one week sprints, flexibility. Hmm. You see all these kind of up, up over there individuals and interactions over processes and tools. I mean, for house building, you need tools, of course, hammers, screwdrivers, whatever. Um, working software over comprehensive documentation, okay? Yeah, working walls, rooms, whatever that means then. So this, this matching of agility and scrum and the principles and practices to house building, it was an unknown territory. Really, really something completely new to us. I mean, I'm working with this method and framework and philosophy for a long time now. It's over 20 years now already. But still, this was brand new. And this was really, really exciting to me back then. Tearing down walls and rebuilding them. No, it's not going to work in hospital. So we can't do that. In software, probably you can do it. Even in hardware manufacturing, it's easier sometimes. But with walls, it's getting difficult. Half-ready things, I mean, incremental development. What's that in house building? I ask you now, what's incremental development in house building? What could that be? You <laughs> I know already they do that, so they told me in the beginning. We don't need a second floor, for example. If the first floor is enough, we don't need a, um, uh -huh. for example, we don't need um, a wooden floor. Yes. Yeah. Also, maybe a lot just having the um, beton on the road. Yeah. That's a good approach. The first one might not work because we got the permit for the plan. So we somehow need to stick to the plan at least a little bit. So going one level lower or only build the first floor, we need to go through this governmental stuff again and get another permit for that. And you also don't need to know the exact position of the outlines. Exactly. Because that is done during hospital. You just need to yep. demo. And that's exactly <laughs> where we went. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what you meant, what that was that. Um, yeah, exactly. That was pretty much what we thought. I mean, the, the walls are pretty clear where they have to be. But outlets, buttons, lights, 
floors, etc. That's where you have some kind of flexibility and where you can update constantly your plan or work from week to week or something like that. I just have a question. Yeah, sure. How familiar have you been with house building when you started? Because, um, okay. I don't really build the house yeah. and I did learn a lot during that. Yeah, yeah. So maybe it would be possible for me to start building a house with from now. Mm -hmm. but Four years ago, never ever. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the good part of that, and I come to the point once again, but a little bit about my history because of the question. Um, my father had, uh, had a company, and uh, he, he, he's a tinsmith in Spanka. Tinsmith, and uh, he built like doors, windows, uh, things like that. And I worked in this company during my school days and studies for about eight years. So I really worked on construction sites, so I had a little bit of a background. I'm not an expert, not at all, but I had at least a little bit of understanding what that means. This was probably the the, pen, uh, the, the prerequisite you need to have to go that way, I guess. Without any knowledge, I would immediately say, don't do it. <laughs> yeah, and how can I track costs and progress? I mean, if you do incremental development, it's the same problem as in software development. How can you track incrementally costs and things like that? Controlling, how does that work? So, we have these principles if you think about agility. Early and continuous delivery. Yeah, probably like buttons, etc. You can do that with that and lift them. Welcome changing requirements. <laughs> <laughs> At Delhi, we had a lot of changes. So the original plan and the vision is changed and changed and changed. So we had to lift that. Uh, deliver frequently, one week sprints. Mm -hmm. We did that. I'll explain how we did that. Work together with your team. Oh, you know, it's highlighted here in red. What is the team? Who is the team in such a situation? You and your wife and the craftsman. Where are stakeholders or some other roles? The craftsman? Yeah, different, I would say the craftsman. craftsman companies, huh? Exactly. This was the other challenge. They were not from one company. They were sometimes competitors, right? So would they collaborate and cooperate if they are competitors? You know, would they become a team? We didn't know. This was a really, really big question mark at the beginning, whether that makes sense or not. Motivated individuals, yeah, okay, we can probably live with that. Face-to-face -face conversation, very important. Mm -hmm. So this is one thing I would say, mo one of the most important. And that's also difficult in, in uh, hospital, constant things. Because the people are not available all the time. It's not like in a... <coughs> in a team situation where you have a stable, long-lived team uh, with the same capacity. Like, we had different companies and the painters and the electricians, they were not there all the time, but came when something needs to happen, right? So it's not really the same situation as like you have another, what is expressed in Scrum. But you can probably a little bit adjust it and then match it. I come to the others later, we will revisit this again. So, uh, one, one short question, how did you manage uh, the, let's say my experience is sometimes it's really hard to get the craft because they're booked out for a month yep. and they have only a small time slot for you. Exactly. And even that is sometimes not the real time slot. I know. So how do you manage to, to, to create one week sprints without yep. knowing the next month for the, for the craft? And because you then their mindset is totally different. Yeah, and you have to change hours. this. <laughs> That's one of the challenges. Yeah. You have to work with people who have no clue what you're talking about if you use the words agile or scrum or iterations or whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I didn't. I didn't explain what we were doing. Yeah. We just built the structure and we did it. This was mainly the, the approach we chose, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because if you start, you know, uh, who said that, I don't know, I had this conversation or with the hippie story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You sound like a hippie to yeah. people who have no interest in that. And we didn't want to build a kumbaya, weird guys, craziness environment. We wanted to work with them to build something we can use at the end. And of course, 
if you build the structure, then it's easier that they can adhere to that, and if you create some rules, they can obey that. That's what you need to do. Of course, you need to figure out whether they are available or not, but that you can tell them up front. This is our idea, this is the plan for the next month, probably. You know, for like a milestone or release or something. Is that probably the same in, in, in software then? Yeah, we created this one week sprints. That means we started really with our product backlog and we created a product backlog for that. Let's call it a house building backlog or something like that. It's of course not really in the sense of a user story, but definitely we wanted to describe what we really want to get out of this light or what, why we want to handle it. So this question, why do we want to have it, to constantly ask that ourselves. Then building it and of course like in, the, uh, like in typically Scrum at the end, reviewing it, accepting it. So this was the basic idea and I can tell you already, it worked. This was the first so big surprise for us. It did work. I will let you know how it worked. But one week sprints was a good decision for us. Interestingly. So, team. I already said what is the team. We created, we, we tried to match that a little bit, you know. Uh, I was pretty much the one guy who had this overview, was responsible for the backlog, uh, did this cost management kind of thingy and so on. So I was pretty much the product on of it. Um, we had the craftsman, we said, okay, we use that, uh, these people as a team. Then we, of course we have stakeholders, like at this time my kids were pretty young and my wife in here and so on. They are stakeholders, definitely because they tell you what they want, they tell you if it's okay, they tell you if you need to change something, yeah? It's an acceptance thing as well. And uh, on the on your side, on the right side, this is my father, like I said, he had this construction company and he was pretty much a very experienced guy, he's also very good in uh, observing something, he was pretty much the scrum master there. So, this was how we thought about it, yeah? We started, this was in February, and the first change was we wanted to start, but then it started to snow, yeah? And we couldn't continue with the, all that snow in, so we had already the first delay in the first spring. So this was an interesting beginning. Um, but what can you do when you have such a situation? You could stop and do nothing and worry about being late or something, but the, <laughs> the interesting first thing for me was, we already had this caterpillar in the backyard, you know, and I'm very interested in everything that has an engine, you know. So driving, playing around, we have gamification, you know, learning new things is obviously very important in an agile environment. And I asked this guy who had the, uh, was the caterpillar driver, uh, well, I would like to learn how to work with that so we can't do anything really seriously, but can I just play around with that? And I thought he would just introduce me to that and give me some lessons, uh, do this, do that. No, he handed me over the key. <laughs> do it. And that's what we did. <laughs> really, there was the caterpillar. I started digging the holes, things like that. So just by trying and learned it. <laughs> my wife also tried it. And my kids laughed also with the inside of it. <laughs> kind of too. That was, it was interesting, really, really, and it was fun, it was a lot of fun. Uh, the second change then, when we had the first uh, holes there, so we wanted to build a basement down here, was, like I said, these were not really solid constructions, these were yeah, built on sand or something, and we had to underpin the house, otherwise the risk to fall over the entire building was too big. So we had to underpin that, was not in the plan, was the next change we had. That's how we started. Um, but then from spring four on, so that's the fourth week, it really took off. We had the basement there, the walls were there, everything went like expected almost. And a sprint really means we said, okay, we sat together with those guys and we asked, simply ask them, because I'm not the expert for uh, like a mason or so, uh, we asked them what will be ready at the end of this week. So that I have an expect, uh, expectation as a product owner and I can also tell the others 
yeah, by the end of this week, this will be ready. So what could come next in the following week and the week after and so on? To create a little bit of continuity in that. Not just sprint by sprint, but continuity. This is, of course, important. I mean, this is also important in product development. It's the same situation. But you need to talk to people because they are not used to deal with that. You need to ask them what you, what kind of information I, as a product company, need. Yeah, and then in Spring 5, you see, it was very fast then. Um, and the next sprints, and this was the most amazing part I experienced here with people who have no clue about agility and Scrum so far, had no clue about Scrum, uh, and maybe also team building, I don't know. These were all people from different companies. And they started to, be, uh, to cooperate and collaborate as if they have worked for years and years together. It was really amazing. Uh, it was like uh, the electrician said, I mean, I got all, we got all the horror stories like uh, the painter is painting the wall, the next day the electrician comes and does the wiring and opens the wall again and you have to redo it. We got so many horror stories, forget them, you scrum. <laughs> Now, really, it didn't happen. I mean, the original estimation for the entire expansion and renovation was two years. We had six months completed because then we had to remove into the house. Everybody moved out of the house. We got everything out of the house. I was the only one still staying there. <laughs> I had about so four square meters where my bed was uh, covered with dust and things like that. So this was challenging, but I did it. Uh, and with this principle, we never ever faced any delay because of these uh, misunderstandings. They really started to talk to each other. I mean, we supported that, of course, by something we call then daily sit-downs. <laughs> <laughs> it was really an investment which was absolutely worth it. Every day we prepared uh, lunch for them and they had the chance to go to uh, have, have lunch together. And what happened there, in, in, it was not 15 minutes, of course, it was an hour or so. We, we didn't say, hey, come on, move on. No, we said, it was great to observe that because they really started talking about what you're doing next, what are you, what's your plan for the afternoon, things like that. All the questions you can imagine what probably coaches or you yourself uh, learned over the years. They really sat together and the electrician asked the, the painter or the mason, well, I, I actually want to do the wiring for that. When are you ready? Yeah, well, I need this and that, that probably tomorrow. Can I help you? And seriously, the electrician helped the mason the, the, uh, uh, using bricks, uh, painting the walls. And the next day, the masoner and the, uh, the painter helped the electrician to pull the wires through the channels like that. They had nothing to do with that. It was not there uh, in their contract or whatever. It, it was not even uh, their responsibility in their company. They just worked together because they, they realized they are faster that way. right? And this was really amazing to observe. This kind of simple technique, people bringing, bringing people together, preparing lunch, and they become a team. It was Astonishing. So, on the right side, the remaining principles. Continuous attention to technical excellence and good design. This daily sit-down helped a lot. And of course, we had the stakeholders frequently there, and I was there yeah, to tell them, yeah, that's exactly how I want it, or no, please do it differently. Not just at the end. Yeah. Simplicity. Yeah. Make it as simple as possible. Uh, a personal uh, philosophy of myself is coming from Mr. Einstein, who said, make things as simple as possible, but not simply. Right? That's what meant with simplicity. We make very often things too complicated, way too complicated. Think about the most simple way to uh, achieve your goal. Self-organizing teams, that's what you saw there, and then reflect, tune, and adjust. Yeah. All the principles, they work. It's exactly what happened there. And this was really amazing. I really love to, to, to get this experience. So, 
Yeah, just a little bit about the surrounding. I mean, of course, Scrum Masters need time to relax as well. It's not able that they observe all the time or can be, you know, filled with some problems and impediments now. Give them time to relax. That's <laughs> also something very important. Stakeholder management, you know, <laughs> keep your stakeholders happy. <laughs> That's probably something Scrum Masters can do. That's very important as well. And of course, as I talked about incremental development. <laughs> yeah. You know, the white wall is from the old part of the building and this is already the new one. Usually it's very, can you do an acceptance with that? <laughs> I mean, the stakeholder, my wife, looks pretty confused by that. It looks like they did something completely wrong, right? But that's exactly incremental development. That's how we made the plans, even with house building. We know there will be a door yeah, where almost the old window was. So, yeah, the first part is to build the wall where the door will fit in and then open the old wall and get rid of the old window. Of course, if you're not familiar with this technique, this kind of incremental development, yeah, <laughs> stakeholders would never ever accept it. But that's what you really need to learn, that this is the right way of doing it. And it was interesting, actually. It was interesting in this kind of situation. So, um, yeah, we had a product backlog in the beginning, a huge wish list. What happens usually to product backlogs? They grow. They change. They change. They never get shorter. <laughs> now, we also had a lot of changes. We never thought in the beginning about having this stove in our uh, in our living room. Um, our neighbor said, okay, I also want to up, uh, expand my home. She wanted to have, uh, have her office in her building and she wanted to sell part of the backyard. So this was not in our cost plan. But for us, it was an interesting to see, uh, interesting situation because very, what you can see here is this, this kind of forest or whatever it looks like uh, became then the playground for our kids. That's very happy where they play now. So this was really Good that we got it, but from a cost perspective, of course, hmm, tough decision. We have such a high risk by doing house building with Scrum, which is a pure experiment already. Should we add risk, uh, economic risk on top of that? Yeah, that's where you need at least a night to, to, to think about that before you do it. Yeah, and also kitchens, etc. That's not a rocket. <laughs> But it looks like that. <laughs> Pretty nice from the outside. <laughs> yeah, another de technique we adjusted to fit into our house build plans. Spikes. You know, when, when the painters came, they showed me all these nice maps yeah. with all the colors and so on. And we, we went through 100 colors for what you can have your wall painted with. And I was completely lost. I knew approximately it should be yellowish, orangish, something. That's what we said, uh, going in that direction. But if you look at this paper version of the color, of this representation, and you go outside with such a small, tiny piece, first of all, from the light, it looks completely different. With the light, it looks completely different. And it looks completely different if the, the material it's, it's used on is different, right? So what is the, uh, the, the solution to that? The painters, they weren't expecting that we said, yeah, paint parts of the wall with this and that and that color. It was completely new to them. They never did it that way before. But they said, I can't decide. I want it. I need it. And that helped a lot, these spikes. Yeah. Not the only kind of spikes we use, but just this is uh, a more obvious example. Um, <laughs> did everything go well? No. I love the, the picture on top of that because uh, this is uh, just under the roof. And you can only enter that section if you have a ladder upstairs. Uh, a ladder, yeah? And so, so this guy is a technician and he did wiring up there. 
and suddenly the letter was gone. <laughs> <laughs> so he was trapped up there. <coughs> Fortunately, we saw it, <laughs> so we, got, we were able to rescue him, but yeah, he was trapped there. This is interesting. We built the concrete, the floors, and so on. And what you usually have to do is to dry them out, to turn on the heating. And in 2013, here in Graz, we had in summer about 40 degrees outside. And we had the same temperature than inside, 40 to 45 degrees. And these were the nights where I, I was also in this building, I slept there. You know, These were the nights when I woke up at 2 in the morning, went to the office to Geisdorf, got my shower there to cool down, <laughs> and returned at 6, 7 in the morning to open the doors for the craftsmen. Because this was this were really two challenge, very challenging weeks, and the other one, the poor guy over there is also an electrician, because sometimes I I have crazy wishes and I wanted uh, in my home everything cut seven, so all the the, the local network cut seven wired, and in every room an outlet and things like that. So this is a little bit over the edge actually, and we I, I think we have now about. 2.5 or 3 kilometers of cut seven cable in the hole. So it's very solid now, so <laughs> Yeah, but it was a challenge to, to squeeze that into all the walls and so on. Yeah, and of course, if you reach a certain point when you build something, you need to do acceptance tests. The best people to do acceptance tests, of course, are the stakeholders clients, people who will use it, the end users. So like my kids, my wife, of course myself as well. Um, and this is so this is the storyline then from 2013, January, February up to November 2013 when we were pretty much done. Yeah. I do that because we're we will never ever be completely done with that. It's a product. <laughs> We still upgrade things and have new ideas. The product backlog is still, it's not growing anymore, but we add new things to that, of course. So, is it agile or not? Was it Scrum or not? Actually, I don't know. You need to decide for yourself. I told you this story. I think uh, with this mastering of many changes, responding to change, it fits into the agile world pretty well. The information become, uh, beyond company borders. That's a great achievement. That was really amazing. Also matches uh, agile goals. Many process improvements, direct communication, things like that. But whether you want to call it agile or not, I don't know. At least we were able to use the scrum principles, the techniques we learned with that, uh, agile principles were applied. So that's definitely part of the story. Um, and before we I say thank you for listening to me um, and we can start the Q&A so that's the last part I have planned for the day um, I want to say, tell you one sentence I got from the electricians because like uh, as I worked with them was in over the weekend I made so the people plan for the next room and said okay I want the outlet here I want the button there I want this kind of light in the room and things like that and I showed I uh, presented this plan uh, together on Monday morning then to the electricians and the other craftsmen and they knew what to do pretty much. I was available for questions uh, pretty much most of the time um, and when they had some, when they found something that's not going to work, yeah, I, I was immediately uh, giving them feedback and telling them, yeah, then do it differently or something like that. And by the end of the week when everything was built in, uh, I did immediately the acceptance for that on Friday. So they are always knew what was okay and what was not okay. And the electrician told me, he never ever had to work that way before. But he really loves it. it it's great. Every week he knows how far he is and not just by the end of the, the journey somebody is coming and telling us, him that everything is crap and everything needs to be changed. So even though those guys, craftsmen, did really appreciate this way of working. It was great. I, I love this sentence so much. And this is really why I wanted, why I like to tell this story also. It's not pure Scrum, definitely not. But Scrum principles, techniques applied to house building, that's my personal experience now. It works pretty well. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I try to be a 
available as much as possible. Of course, I have my job, and uh, it's not possible to be available all the time. Yeah, sure. Uh, and like I said, my father was there, so yeah. my master, uh, my wife sometimes. So it was an exchange. But I tried to be there as much as possible. Would you say it's a success factor? Yeah. Um, yeah, you finally answered my ultimate question uh, in, in the end, uh, whether the others uh, have, been, um, uh, have been happy uh, the workers too uh, if you got feedback from, from them, so you, you've got feedback from, from them, yep. but the second question is, have they also been aware uh, of that uh, this is something different uh, in the beginning or that they will work differently? But it just happened to them. <laughs> it just happened to them. It just happened to them. I, of course, told them I wasn't able to make detailed plans. We need to find another way. Okay. Of course, that's what I uh, uh, had the communication with, uh, the conversation with them. But whether this is something based on Scrum or iterative, incremental, whatever, no. Of course, sometimes when they ask me what I'm doing and so on, I told them what I'm doing. Of course, a little bit of uh, theory. I gave them over the six months. We had a lot of conversations, but this wasn't so important actually. Did, did, did you uh, tell them afterwards? That is, uh, yeah, that sure. Is, afterwards, yeah. I told them that's how we work in software and so on. So I did that, but like I said, for for the beginning, and I created a structure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I explained what the structure is and the process and how I intend to cooperate and collaborate with them, mm -hmm. uh, and that I will uh, be available for questions and like that. That's what I did. But all the theory behind that now. You were sorry. You try to apply these kind of principles of introducing Scrum to some areas in business that Scrum is really good to be applied. If you did, you get some experience regarding it. I mean, there is always this obvious example nowadays, uh, Scrum with hardware and manufacturing and so on. Um, I'm a less trainer. I give courses also at BMW. They build cars. You know, it's also a completely different story. I mean, uh, nowadays cars are a mixture of hardware and software. It's very, mu very much software inside a car and uh, even more than hardware, I would say, already. Um, but of course, these people are absolutely not used to that. And the start is much slower, the change is much, much slower, and you need to adjust, it, especially if you talk about tools and or test automation, things like that. I mean, imagine a car, BMW, X7 or something like that. What's a test automation every sprint? What could that be? User acceptance test, security. You need to crash cars to be aware that this is going through all this, you know, uh, auditing and things like that, that you are, are allowed to drive them. But crashing a X7 every sprint <laughs> would be expensive. You will uh, figure out that you will have undone work, as it is called, for example, in this or even in Scrum. You will have this kind of technical debt, and you need to live with that and find a way how to fix that later on. It's part of the plan. Uh, for me, breaking as a team is uh, really about commitment. So a team has to commit to something. Mm -hmm. How did you manage uh, to get this kind of commitment? I didn't. Without knowing them? I didn't. Okay. I didn't at all. I didn't manage it. I really just said, that's what we, I, like I said, uh, it's not about sprint by sprint thinking. It's really thinking about what comes the sprint after and already have this conversation. It's like in probably backlog refinement and so on, where we plan the two to three next sprints. Did the same thing. And I told them, yeah, we expect, are you available? For example, the question was about availability. I would like to do this next and then after this that. Will you be available in this week? Yes, no. And if it's a no, you need to adjust your plan, that's all. But I didn't manage to do it. I just explained the expectation, the goal, and then they pretty much self-organized it. They just it just felt right for them. Yep. So it just shows that it's it's and 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 the normal human behavior to work like that and the, the 
classic way from, of project management is not. It's not human. It's it's like you do some techniques about it and, and yeah. take out the humanity. Yeah, yeah that's true. Uh, and my very first uh, experiment with Scrum in the year 2000 was I even there didn't tell anyone that Scrum. For me, it wasn't important. It was never important that it has a name. For me, it was important that people understand how to work together and what's the expectation, how we can improve together. This is setting this kind of goal, whether it has a name or not. Actually, I don't really care. Um, maybe my, my, my thoughts are wrong, but for me, it's hard to imagine how you split the work into sprints <laughs> on your own, because I. Have I'm a technician from base, but I have to in the human being a house. What what thing first? What's the next step? What should be the next step? Otherwise, it would collapse. Or how did you manage that? You don't need to know that. Like I said, I mean, if you're taking over this role, uh, a little bit of background on construction mm -hmm. sites is really, really important and helpful. Uh, but on the other hand, if you're the client or the stakeholder, you don't need to break down uh, the, the, the the work the, the work packages or something. You don't need to know whether this cable is the right cable for this or that. Okay. You need to tell them what's your goal, what's your expectation. What do you want to get out of this kind of work they then later on do? They are the experts. Mm -hmm. You need to express, I want a clear, nice light in there. I want a button on every to, uh, at every side of the, the room. So if I enter the room, I can uh, switch it on there and switch it off there. That's my goal. That's what I did. But you, you know the, the big plan is, is, first of all, we have to dig a hole and, and, and to stabilize the house and everything else. I didn't know that. No, I don't have to. I said I want a basement, and in the basement I want a heating, okay. I want a, a window, okay. I want a door, I want this security, and things like that. Yeah. It's really worth this yeah. Incredible. Yeah, it was, like I said, it was a big, big experiment for us. Because as you said, all the work is always, always done. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was really amazing. Like I said, we had, uh, the original plan was two years. And we did it in, we had six months, and we did it in six months. Mm -hmm. It was, was amazing. Of course, the, the variable, like I said, we, our, our wish list changed a lot. So the variable for us was that we had a buffer economy, uh, on the cost side. Because if you add something on top of it, of course, it's more cost expensive. If you don't exchange it, just. Yeah. But of course, we had also a limit. I mean, we're, I'm not, I don't know, what was the example? Uh, Virgin Mobile, Richard French. I'm not Richard French, mm -hmm. so I don't have millions and billions mm -hmm. to spend into house work. Okay. Otherwise, you would have a rocket on you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Otherwise, it would fly. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes on a daily basis, but whenever it was needed. Uh, of course, every week we learned on every sprint, of course. This was completely new. We invested a lot about in, in learning, and I simply had the conversation with these guys then. Uh, this is not going well. How can we do this differently next time, or something like that? Of course, this conversation we had. But not just me. I mean, this was also everybody who was just involved. Like, my father explained, OK, if you do this, uh, that's probably not going to work. Let them know that we need to have like a different way of working there. Things like that. Simple conversation. Well, then thank you. Enjoy the rest.